I started in 1986, in August of 1986. I was the second librarian that Jones School had. The previous librarian, Mary Barnard, actually set up the library. I worked over at Herring Hall when I first came to, to Rice, and it was a one room. And um, we had the economic summit in that particular room in 1990. When the G7, met at Rice when George Bush was president and we had George Bush and Maggie Thatcher and um, I can't remember who was Jim, uh, Jim Baker and the whole group and we rearranged the library in order to suit the G7 so uh, they put up walls and took down walls and changed things around and made offices and then had to come back as soon as it was over, and I think it lasted a week, and put it all back together again. It was noisy, it was disruptive, it was just about anything you can imagine, and of course very, very expensive. But it was also very exciting to have that kind of thing on the campus. When the um, Economic Summit was here at Rice, the library made a lot of Oh, accommodations, our reference desk, the big mahogany reference desk, I think, was disassembled and moved out, and another table put in that area. I just found that, a vi uh, that period of time um, a really exciting time to be here. Well, when I first came, I, it was right after the economic summit, and things had uh, were kind of exciting around here because things had uh, been changing in the library, some walls had gone up, and walls were coming down and people were all abuzz about the summit and what had happened in the library. The center was established in 68. Special Collections was at the very back of the library down a deep dark hallway with a solid door. It wasn't very inviting. Well Woodson wasn't the, the prettiest place on campus at the time. It looked more like a prison. Uh, the door was her terrible. It was a solid, solid door. Uh, and you could only see straight ahead. You could only see uh, the shelving uh, in the reference, our, our reference section. That's all you could see. You couldn't see anything else in there. And so people were very reluctant to come into the Woodson. So we didn't have a lot of traffic. Well, we had a renovation a few years ago that totally changed the front of the Woodson and made it a lot more visible, a lot more inviting. We have people who stroll by and just walk in to ask what we are and what we have, which is, you know, day and night from what we had before, it's wonderful. More exciting than that, what's been really different from when I started is that we've been digitizing a lot of our rare and unique materials and providing access to them online. And all of the finding aids, the guides that describe all of our collections are on our, on our website also, and so we get most of our research inquiries based on Google searches and people finding out from our finding aids and those digital objects online what we have. We have the rare book collections, the Rice University archives, and the manuscript collections. All sorts of travel diaries, letters, photographs, tin types, um, whiskey decanters, all sorts of things. An interesting Rice-related collection came in this past summer which was um, more of the Lovett family papers. And these had been sitting in the, the attic of Edgar O'Dell Lovett's grandson for lo these many decades. Um, and there were some holes in the history that we had on President Lovett's world tour that he took, you know, trying to figure out what shape Rice should take, how should he form the university administratively, academically, physically. Um, there were some holes in that story and so the materials that we came in that got came into us this summer uh, fill in some of that because there are travel diaries from the world tour um, mo more postcards and so that's been a lot of fun we're a depository library for federal government information so we are a part of we participate in a program where the um, government printing office sends us materials produced by um, all three branches of government, um, federal agencies, the White House, um, the judiciary. We get government documents um, that, that cover the range increasingly in an online format, but still some intangible format. We're also a depository library for the state of Texas. 
documents um, and we're a patent and trademark depository library. So we work with the area inventors. When I started here, we were located in a kind of pokey, sort of dark space um, in the back corner of the basement with the old original tiles, very, very 1960s kind of. One time I went to the staff lounge, my uh, first week here, and made a left turn instead of a right and got in this alleyway that I felt like I was in a Harry Potter novel that it was just covered with stuff and it was narrow and winding and I felt like there'd be a magic door any moment. So that even that alleyway has been cleaned up in the renovation. In 2005, our area was renovated and we moved to a different part of the basement. And it's a much brighter, um, much brighter space, much more attuned to what we do today. And so that, has, that was a huge change and a very positive change. And that's when we became the Kelly Center. The Kelly family provided um, the money for that renovation and, and we became the Kelly Center for Government Information and Microforms at that time. We were getting about a thousand reels a year of microfilm. As I worked here, that increased to about 6,000 a year. And so it kind of went like that and then it tailed off again. And now we're getting much more online content. Um, so I guess I saw an increase in microfilm and now an increase in microform um, versions of some of the larger collections. But there are still primary source materials that are only available in microform. Some of the fun things that we've done, I guess, with, with additional communities is we used to work more, I think, with the science middle school students that would come in. Um, and that was always fun because they liked the, the equipment that we had in our area. I don't know why teenage boys love microfilm machines, but they do. <laughs> it's like you turn buttons, mechanical things happen. And <laughs> First came, I was adding things to our web pages using only HTML, and now we're using a content management system, Plone, and we've had many iterations of that content management system and improvements each time. So now our pages, I think, are a lot brighter, a lot um, more cheerful, 